right. We've got a hot half here. Yep. Um, it's obviously cold, sitting on a bench. Yep. Um, what would you normally have to do for maintenance? You're going to look for shorts. You're going to look for miswires, opens. You're going to test resistance. Right. So yeah. So if I'm going to start testing this this unit, I'm going to use my own meter, obviously. Yep. And I am going to go ahead and going to test for resistance. That's what I'm going to look for. All right. So I'm going to put my meter inside of ohms. Mm hmm Make sure that it's actually. Um, that the test leads are good. Mm -hmm. All right, then I would go to each one of the heaters one by one, and again, I have to know the wiring diagram and I have to be able to see the, uh, the pins. So I'm going to go ahead and put on my glasses again. Right. And I already know the wiring diagram for this particular tool. Okay. So I know that 1 in 13 is going to be my first zone. Okay. All right, 2 and 14. Okay. Right. And then so on and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and go through every one of them. Now again, what did I not look for? And that is a direct short. Right. All right, for me to be able to find a direct short, the only way I can do that is by touching the body, all right? Yep. And going through each one of the pins to make sure that they are not making a contact. So again, I have to touch them all. I also have to know uh, that there is a potential of the meter actually reading something on one of the pins. So I have to know the acronyms. All right, so if I know that it has an M, it's gonna be inside of mega ohms. Okay. So if it's inside of mega ohms, then I know that uh, that, that pin was making a, a contact, but it's actually open. It's just reading the uh, the mineral inside of the uh, the heater. So the resistance of material inside of the heater. Okay. All right, so I need to know that because if it checks, if it doesn't make a reading between here and the pin, yep. it may not be that it's bad. All right, then I have to do the same thing for each of the thermal couples. All right, so on a grounded thermal couple, I cannot check it across the um, from the uh, uh, the body of the uh, of the hot half because it's grounded. It's going to make a contact each time. Right. But I have to take a look at all of my um, my ohms on each of the. Uh, and you're checking the ohms on thermal couples because. Just to make sure that it's there. Just so that you're, you're basically um, checking, make sure your circuit's that's it. wired. And to make sure that there is a contact being made. So yep. thermocouples are shorts. All right, grounded thermocouple, both of the leads, because it, it's a type J thermocouple, the iron versus copper nickel. They twist those leads together, and it's actually grounded to, uh, to the sheaf of the, uh, of the thermocouple. Mm -hmm. The sheaf is actually touching the heater. The heater is touching the body here. Yep. Right, so on a grounded thermocouple, mm -hmm. everything is grounded together. Mm -hmm. All right, and I can prove that just by doing this. So I'm going to touch one of the leads, and you know, I'm going to put it on audible just so that you can hear it. Right, it'd be a little bit easier, mm -hmm. all right? But a short, all right, that is my thermocouple. Mm -hmm. But if I touch the body, you can see that there's also a contact. Sure. All right? And I would have to do that for each of the leads. All right, that's a grounded thermocouple. Got it. So standard routine maintenance, you're checking ohms for heaters yep. so that you can predict heater failure. If yep. you, so if you find an ohm reading that's really high, Yes. Chances are that heater may be yeah, you know, I, I reaching an yeah, end of right. life. I, I believe that, yeah, that as you look at the ohms, if mm -hmm. the ohms are rising, mm -hmm. then you're probably looking at corrosion on the element itself and potentially, you know, you can also kind of like a, a say that if it's 20% more, maybe it's time to go ahead and change out that sure. heater. 